Hello. I'd like to share the slick trick I picked up at some point when I was learning how to program C about how to make a flexible command line parser. And I'm going to show an example here that's related to this networks class that I'm teaching. But the process that I go through can be applied to any kind of program that you want to make. But in this example, let's say that I wanted to allow the user to specify a URL, a port, um, a path to a file that we're going to save that we get at that location, and then also a timeout in seconds if we don't find the file that we're looking for at that URL and that port. Okay, so those happen to be the four pieces of information that I want to load, but again, you could do it for whatever. Okay, so the thing is, you know, I could just say, hey, the first argument's URL, the second argument's port, the third argument's the path, the fourth argument's the time, but then the user has to remember that to put them in that exact order. And what if they don't remember that? So, so I would like to, to be able to, to have them specify which parameter they're, they're about to say. So, you know, I might want to be able to write something like, so this program would be called client, you know, client, maybe I, I remember to, to put the port first. Okay, so I say port 80 and I say URL, you know, most important website out there, ctrail.com. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, the path is supposed to be index.html, whatever. And so I don't ne didn't necessarily remember the, the exact order here. And maybe I don't even want to specify the timeout. Maybe there's some default arguments. So in this case, maybe the timeout's going to be 10 seconds by default. And actually, you know what? Most of the time when I'm doing HTTP, I'm using port 80. So, so maybe I, I don't even specify that most of the time. And so I want to be able to handle default, default arguments. I want to be able to put them in any order. Maybe I specify the port last, right? Um, of course, in order to do that, though, I have to to tell the program which thing I'm specifying, right? So, th so this is kind of the style that I'm going for. And, and this is the style that, that like Python's command line parser, arg parse would use, for example. All right, so let's see if we can make this happen. I'll show you how to do it with some really slick tricks in, in C with pointer arithmetic. But first we gotta remember how arguments work by default. And in order to do arguments in C, you remember you have to add these two parameters to the main method. The first one will tell you the number of arguments that have been typed. The second one is the actual arguments themselves stored as a two-dimensional array of characters, or in other words, um, an array of strings or an array of character arrays. So let me first just print out that information and show you what it looks like to make sure we're, we're, we kind of at least know where we're starting. So I know that I have argc number of arguments, so I'm going to loop through each one of them. I'm going to go ahead and print print this out. Um, I'm going to say, okay, you know, first I'll print the which which argument it is, followed by a colon, and then print the argument itself. It's it's a string. And so to get the argument, I'm going to dereference uh, the pointer to the uh, array, and I'm going to go to index i, and then the the string thing will know to uh, follow that to dereference that and follow it until it gets the characters, until it sees the null terminator. So if I compile this, and now I run it, let's just say I run it by itself, notice that there is already one parameter here. So we always have the very first parameter as the name of the program in the command line, or the path that was used to invoke the program. And this is if you wanted to, you could actually provide like an absolute path and so so in this case my absolute path to this is is here and if, if i were to run it like this okay now i get something a little different so this this now could give your inf your program some information about you know the absolute path this was in and if you wanted to save files in the same folder or something it could help you there but i'm actually going to ignore that for this particular application because i don't care what folder i'm in um so what i'm going to do is is yeah, I want, I want to have more flexibility. And in particular, if I start to, to add other parameters, right? So if I put in like URL, www.ctrail.com, and then I put in the port 80, um, you know, I, I know that those are going to be the parameters that come in next, right? So, so the first parameter I actually care about is that index one. And the next one's index two, index three, index four. So let me make a helper method here to, to parse the arguments. And so I've encapsulated the arguments in a struct here. So what I'll, what I'll do is I'll make the return type of this argument, I'll make the return type of this method be that type. So I'll say struct my args, parse args, and I'll pass along 
these two parameters. Okay, and so what I'll do is is my args. Uh, I will set up a struct that I'll eventually return. But my job in this method is to, to fill in that struct. Now, right off the bat, I can actually put in my default values. So I can say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to parse the, the arguments, and I'm going to return them uh, packed into the structure. But I can, I might as well set up the default parameters right here. So I could say, okay, ret dot port equals 80. Um, turns out actually it's supposed to be a character string in our program, not not an int. And then yeah, the timeout we can say is 10. Okay, so we got those default values right. So, so first we set up the default values. But now we actually got to loop through this array and pull out what else we have. And so here's where we can get a little bit fancy with pointer arithmetic. So if, um, you know, it, it, when it's formatted like this, if we dereference the very first, actually, let me show it down here. If I were to dereference argv like this, so, so I'll, I'll just point right there what that is here. Well, so let me compile this again and, and uh, run it. So you know, if I dereference argv, it gives me the first uh, parameter. And that's because if you remember your pointer rules, um, this is pointing to the beginning of the array of parameters. And so when I dereference that, it's really the same thing as saying argv at index zero. Uh, but what I can do is, is I can actually, if I, if I were to say um, argv plus plus, that will go to the next, that will advance the pointer by one, mem uh, one chunk, one um, memory address, uh, one increment of pointers in the memory address. So, so this, will, this will take us to our next element in the array. And since we don't care about the first element because we know that that's the, the name of the program, we can just automatically advance to the next element. And I'm going to do this a lot, so I'll just maybe I'll put these on the same line. I know you're not usually supposed to do that stylistically, but I'll do it. So here we say advance to the next element. Okay, so this is the trick. And if you understand this, it's a great way to test your understanding of, of pointers. If you can get this, then you're good on pointers. Why does it work for me to advance to the next element like that? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to um, say, wow, argc is greater than zero. All right, so, so as long as there are still parameters left to parse here, all right? What I'll do is, is I'll check to see, okay, I know that I'm trying to have this, this format here where each parameter is set off by these two hyphens. So I'll look and I'll say, okay, if, um, let me dereference argv, so, so let me go to the element in the array that I happen to be at right now. If the first character is a, um, is a hyphen, then there's a chance that it could be one of these special uh, fields that, that demarcates a parameter. All right, so, so if I look at the string and the first thing is a hyphen, okay, well then what I need to do is look at the next thing, right? So if I just saw hyphen hyphen URL, for example, well, I need to actually go to the next parameter if it exists. And, and that's the one that I wanna save away and pack into my structure. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, if strcmp, remember in C, the way you compare strings is to call this, this method, which will go through, okay, so the first string is, this is, uh, actually before I get there, I gotta, okay, I gotta do um, arg, oh no, no, I'm sorry. No, we're good here. So I'm gonna say if strcmp um, argv, and we're looking to see, is it URL? Okay, um, if that is equal equal zero, <laughs> So it turns out the way strcmp works is um, it returns a value less than zero if this is less, uh, if this is before this alphabetically, or a value greater than zero if this is after this al alphabetically. So if it's equal to zero, they're the same. Uh, sometimes people will write this as if not, it looks weird though, I don't like it. But sometimes people write if not strcmp that, then they're actually equal. I think that looks confusing, so I'm just gonna write it like this. Um, okay, so, so yeah, if, if this happened to be um, that, what we'll do is we'll go to the next param. We'll go to the next parameter, right? So we just saw this. We want to see what comes right after that. So again, I'll, I'll do this. Advance to the next element, right? Um, 
but maybe, you know, I got I got to check. I should do a little bit of error check handling here. I'll make sure, you know, if if argc is, is still greater than or equal to zero, or um, or actually if argc is still greater than zero, strictly greater than zero, th then I can actually look at what's here, right? So, so I should, should make sure I still actually have a parameter left. And if I do, then I say, okay, great. The thing that comes right after URL should go into that field. So I'll say ret.url is equal to that, that string, the next string there. But if I don't have anything there, I should probably print something out to the user. I'll say, you know, print error, um, expecting field after URL. And then I will exit gracefully from the program, okay? And then, okay, great. And, and there's more stuff I'm gonna have to do here. I should, I should handle all the other parameters. Um, and then I should probably also do a little little warning here. If, if you give me something that's not directly after, you know, if you give me something that's not a hyphen hyphen or, or, and, and then something not directly after that, I should probably warn you. I should say, you know, print uh, warning unrecognized field. So I'll do that. And then regardless, uh, once I get to the end of this, I should make sure that I shift once more to keep the loop moving. So in the example where I, I maybe I saw URL first, and then in there I jumped to the next thing and I actually got what the value of the URL was, I need to advance it once more before the next iteration of the loop to get to the next potential parameter here. So, so regardless of what happened, let me advance once more. Okay, I've got enough code, let me uh, test it. And, oh, see, I've been writing too much Python code lately. So I meant to say um, printf, not print. Um, and then we've also got, yeah, I did that again uh, down here. Okay. All right. So so what I'll do now is, is um, let me get rid of this for a second. I'll just call this method here. So say parse args, argc, argv, and actually I'll, I'll put the, I'll say struct my args, args equals that. So then I'll say client, and actually maybe maybe I want to, um, yeah, I probably want to do something else. I want to make sure that probably that the URL is actually, has been specified. If, if For my required parameters, I should actually probably check to make sure that they're really there. Um, so I'll do this first for the URL. So, so I'll say if, um, the URL is empty. So say f if str cmp uh, ret dot URL and the empty string. If that's the empty string, then I should should say error. Um, require a URL to be specified, and then I'll exit gracefully. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so let's let's call this, and yeah, actually let's compile this again and, and let's run it. So if I if I say client by itself, it says require URL to be specified. Um, if I say URL by itself, it says expecting field after URL. Right, that was that was this error check I had there. Um, so finally, I'll do this www.australia.com, and let's make sure it made its way down here. So after this, I should actually be able to see um, the URL that I specified my args.url. So I'm gonna say printf. Uh, okay, whoops, I meant, sorry, I meant to say args.url. That's the name of the variable here. Okay, i do this. Oops, gotta compile it again. And now it says www.ctrail.com. Okay, so that worked. Oh yeah, and just to test it, let's say I put in something there I didn't recognize. If I put in, you know, blah. It says warning, unrecognized field, blah, but, but it does keep going. So this is this is a graceful way to handle. Although I guess I should put the line break there. Okay, and now so this is this is the trick, right? So I'm just using pointer arithmetic to advance the next element. And if I mean if you happen to have more than one sub field with each parameter, let's say maybe this was expecting two strings to follow it. Well, then I could you know I could do this sort of thing twice. So so you can make it very flexible. Um, all I need to do in this particular program is you know, just copy and paste this code in here. So, you know, I, I did the URL, but, but the other required thing is 
Well, I might as well do them in order here. So a URL port, you know, so, so I could just copy and paste this and, and basically do the same thing. Um, so yeah, let me just do that for a second for, I'll do that for port and I'll do that for path. And then there's just one more thing I wanna show you on timeout here. All right, so, so now I've got um, one for URL, one for port, one for path, and one for timeout. Now, if I go to compile this, um, I'm going to get a warning because it says, I'm trying to assign a uh, character array pointer to a time t or a long int. And that's because actually, if I look in the struct, okay, yeah, the, it turns out the URL of the port and the path in this particular example are all character arrays, but timeout is a time t, which, on my operating system um, is is type def to uh, long int. So I actually have to do a conversion here. So this is another thing you can do in the parser. Um, if you get to a particular timeout that's not actually supposed to be a string, you can convert it from a string to whatever type it's supposed to be. So, so there's a built-in method in C called a2i, um, which will convert, actually I should probably use a2l, um, array to long. So character array to long. This will go through and parse the string and convert it into a long. So now when I compile this, it doesn't give me any warnings and I'll get the correct information if I were to go out and print um, each of the parameters here. But maybe for now, I'll just print, let me see, I think it should be, is it UT or UL or LU? Okay, that's long, I forgot for a second. Uh, yeah, so if, if, if I were to go to print the timeout, I, I mean, I don't need a long, this is the time out in seconds. That, uh, a billion seconds is already like 32 years, um, roughly. Uh, yeah, so no way I'm gonna actually even need, you know, 32 bits to specify that, but, but um, okay. But it's in a long. So it's the urlctrail.com, path was out.html, and then I'll say timeout was 20. Um, well, it's not clear, I'm gonna just say client. Uh, okay, so I didn't do the uh, line breaks here, but you can see time, time that was 20. All right, so that's it. So a little bit uh, tedious, a little bit tedious, but it's, it's pretty straightforward and it's a great review of, of pointer arithmetic, um, advancing by one chunk of the one block of memory in the array of this type. So in this case, it's a point, it's an, a pointer array, an array of pointers to character array addresses. And so when we say plus plus, we're advancing by on my 64 bit machine, eight bytes to get from the pointer from, from this argument to the pointer to the next argument in memory. So there you have it. I hope that was illuminating. I'll provide a link in the description to the starter code for, for the assignment that has this. Oh, one more thing I want to show. Um, there's another really nice thing you can do for your users here. You can have a little help thing. So if, if, I, if they typed hyphen hyphen help, then you can actually just print out the usage here. So what I would say is then print F, you know, this, this should be invoked as client or uh, yeah, client. And then I could, I could say how it's supposed to, it's supposed to be. And then, you know, blah, blah, blah. So whatever you want to print out for, for the usage or, or documentation here. And then, so, so what I'll do is, is I'll, I'll exit here. So, you know, I'm not gonna keep running the program if, if the user asks for help because, because they don't even know how to use it yet. So I'll just print that out real quick. Um, so let me, oh yeah, I should have a semicolon, right? <laughs> but yes, now if I say client help, you know, it'll print this out. Nice thing to do for your users.